This is the most Googled recipe of 2022. So this isn't just the most Googled recipe like in India, this is the most Googled recipe in the whole world in 2022. It's called paneer pasanda. So a pasanda is kind of like a creamy yogurt. Sometimes we're using cream. Uh, you can use uh, yogurt, tomato base, uh, loads of spices, more on the mild side and uh, nutty. And that's what we're going to do. Paneer is the Indian style cheese. If you're not sure where to get it, have a look on the deli counter. Thank you, yes. Let's get going, it's actually got threads Parts. So we're gonna make a tomato paste, we're gonna make a pasanda gravy that it all sits in and the paneer itself gets stuffed and fried. Oh my gosh! I can kind of see now from that description of why that was so popular. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten cashew nuts. Bless you. I've also got a cinnamon stick. Uh, it specified five peppercorns. I might have gone for six. This is some mace, which I think is something they use in pepper spray or something. We've got some whole nutmeg, which we're gonna grind on. The cashews. Cloves. Well, there's also one other thing, cardamom pods. It just says three cardamom. Now in these pods are seeds, but you can't really eat the pods. So I'm gonna take the seeds out. Doesn't tell me to do that, but I don't like the idea of trying to fish it out. Get those seeds out and get the green bit gone. The uh, stench, it's amazing. Uh, the only other thing for this paste that we really need to prepare is some tomatoes. So I'm just gonna chop these up roughly. In fact, this all gets blended together with the nuts in a bit. There's this person from America that watches me that's like, I just love it when you say tomatoes. Can you just say it all the time? Tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Tomato? But yeah, these four tomatoes, uh, just cutting them up nice and rough into big old chunks, all right? Oh, that's loud. Cashews, the cinnamon stick, cardamom seeds from the pods. And again, it tells me to stick the whole pods in. But there is no point in the recipe where it tells me to fish it out. I, I want to fish. The cloves, peppercorns, the mace, the nutmeg. Oh, that smells amazing. Right, anyhow, very spicy, but in a sort of mild way. So we're gonna warm this water up. All those spices are gonna mingle. Slightly worried about the cinnamon stick. What are you feeling about this, huh? Are you excited? Do you like paneer? Paneer. It's now telling me to make a brown onion paste and it doesn't re reference that in the ingredients at all, but from the looks of it, we're just gonna whiz up some onions in a blender. Okay. Every time! Oh wow, that stinks! That'd be an amazing prank! Wow! It's not really pasty to me, but hey-ho. If I just leave this for a little bit, it should settle down into the bowl. I'm gonna need this to blend up the tomatoes um, imminently. I'm happy with that. That's simmered away for about 20 minutes. Easily got the cinnamon stick out here like that. Ugh! He says. Uh, so I've just drained that out and it's a little bit wet. It looks like kind of like the texture of a really badly made mashed potato. So I'm just gonna go with my instincts here and answer my doorbell. So it asked me to get like half a teaspoon of crushed green chili. Now I couldn't get that, so I've just got a green chili a moment ago, uh, just taking a cheek off it and just sliced it up into nice little bits. Uh, same with a bunch of coriander, so I just uh, chopped that up nice and rough as well. A good old handful of that. And it's telling me uh, to get a tablespoon, so that looks about right. <laughs> I'm totally winging this. I have to say though, despite the coriander being chopped up smelling like I've just freshly cut my grass, the variety of smells right now is amazing. Got some raisins. All right, so this is our first batch of the paneer. Um, I, I think it's a cheese that I'm not gonna hate. You guys know my history of cheese. If it's melted, I'll love it, unless it's not like a really strong one. It reminds me a little bit of halloumi. Yeah, but it's not intense, it's very milky. I like that. And we're gonna grate that with this other stuff. And I had a moment there, like, what, grating cheese? And thought, yes, of course you grate cheese, but this, that doesn't feel like it should be grated, more like crumbled, but, we'll, ah, yep. Yeah, we'll do our best to not grate our thumb. All right, so the paneer, the raisins, the chilies, this is some mint as well, coriander, and those nuts. Now all of this should come together to form a stuffing. Let's mingle it with our hand, I guess. Definitely colourful, look at that, it looks like some weird hedge. Why do I feel like it needs sugar though? I mean, you've got the raisins in there for the sweetness, but you're left with this, yeah, it looks like a couscous. We sometimes make a couscous salad once a year in the summer on the hottest day of the year in the UK. Normally about 10 degrees, but wow. We're starting to feel really positive about this recipe. 
right, it's still like warm, but I'm impatient. This should also make a paste. Uh, and we've seen what's happened to the onion thing so far. I'm gonna remember to turn it on. Oh, it's on. <laughs> of course it's on. Smooth as a baby's bum. All right, so this is, I wouldn't say paste-like. Ooh. Maybe the word paste is, you know, quite generic. All right, so slightly wet paste aside, this has got to go somewhere and we're gonna make paneer sandwiches effectively. We're just gonna cut it in half so we have got two triangles to basically form a sandwich, okay? And in our sandwich, we are gonna take some of that stuffing mix. I don't know, oh yeah, I can make a little indent actually. I can really drive that in there. But I am gonna leave a slight border, making sure I've got a raisin in there. I want the raisin. And we kind of join it together. I don't think we're gonna fully seal it. We are gonna slurry it in a minute, which might bond it. So I'll do some more of these sandwiches. They almost look good enough to eat. That <laughs> Yeah. All right, so let's just make that slurry. This is um, some corn flour or corn starch, whatever you call it. I opened a new pack a minute ago and bizarrely, for once in my life, it didn't go everywhere. So we'll add a little bit of water. This is a good consistency. I'm just trying to get those lumps out. Spatch is really good for that. Like a windscreen wiper for your bowl. All right, so my sandwiches are ready. Actually made eight in the end. I've still got a few little spare bits. Uh, it just says to fry it. Doesn't tell me like, the specific temperature. So we're gonna get some oil hot in a pan, shallow fry style -y. So we'll take this and coat it in the slurry. Oh wow, that's really thick. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Nice, lightly browned. Turn that over and repeat the other side, right. Ooh, beautiful, so here's my first one, just down like that. You see that brown color? We've got that either sides, both the face sides, golden brown. On this one particularly, they look like grilled cheese, don't they? On this one, I have actually done the sides as well, like I said. And for me, I think it just looks a lot better. It kind of encases it and chars it and crisps it and flavors it and do that, in my opinion. All right, we're on the home straight now. And <laughs> I would quite happily stop and try this and think, yeah, it's been a good morning. I'm a little bit confused because we're on the final step now of making the gravy. Some of the steps are like, heat the butter and the oil in a pan with the cumin seeds and none of that has got a place on the ingredients list. I don't think it's much. I don't think I've got cumin seeds. I've got cumin powder, because it says to use that later. But we'll just get by. Right, we're gonna have to go with it, and I'll do my best to type this recipe up uh, with the things that I've used, if that's right, because the butter and the oil is not on there. All right, so it's got a, a blob of butter, and I don't know, like a tablespoon of oil. I've got a bit more here, just in case. Whilst it's warming up, add the cumin seeds bay leaf and cinnamon sticks. It didn't tell me <laughs> to get bay leaves, but I think, yes, I have. We've struck gold there. I don't know how old these are. These do not look like they're in date. <laughs> we'll just stick them in. And the cinnamon stick and the cumin seeds, which none of this was listed. It's brilliant. But I'm not really against that because toasted cumin seeds in particular smell blooming stonking. The next thing to go in, it says in the steps to use uh, grated ginger, but in the ingredients it was uh, ginger puree. And I think we can agree that is a similar texture to our onion puree. But it also tells me they're in the <laughs> ingredients, but it might not even come in this method. I've got it ready anyway. Uh, we've got turmeric, red chili powder, garam masala, and ground coriander. And the last thing was this something called a kasuri methi, which is also a dried fenugreek leaf, popular in Indian cuisine. One of the alternatives was maple syrup. But in the supermarket, they had something called Indian curry leaves. And this was also on the list of alternatives to fenugreek leaves, which, yeah, I struggled to get. Anyhow, from those crazy leaves uh, to the bay leaves that I luckily had, <laughs> Our glossed cinnamon stick, we've been pushing that around the pan. And these lightly toasting cumin seeds that have given off an amazing smell. But it is telling me to push in the ginger puree. That's getting a bit, that's getting a bit dangerous. It's all a little calmer now, but it did say to use potentially grated ginger in the method. And that probably would have caused less of a sizzle. But it's now telling me to add those other bits. Lovely smell, fair play. Get in our onion paste. Go on, in you go. Now at this point, we get in our tomato paste, which feels like forever ago. Ooh. 
I turned the heat off for that bit, but that was much calmer. Right, let's bring this up to a heat, stir this through and see what color it changes it. I have to be honest, I don't know what this is gonna taste like. I'm so confused. There's so much going on. So that is gently bubbling away now, a few little oil traces. Last bit apparently for like a minute or two. Sugar, and this is some cream. Oh yeah. I don't know if I've done this right. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere in India there's some people crowded around a screen now going, wow, what is that? But what we'll do now is at this stage, and we can garnish it with more coriander uh, and cream in a bit, is we just get these things. Oh yeah, we forgot about these, didn't we? I feel like I'm glossing blistered cucumber grilled cheese sandwiches in curry. Oh, that is a beautiful sight. That is gorgeous. And apparently, that's it, which at several times during this video, I was afraid that we were just gonna come up with some concoction, but I think we've done it. So let's garnish and gobble. I guess you'd serve rice or just dunk a naan bread in it or whatever. Drench some more cream up and down it and some coriander on top. That is pretty darn vibrant. I'm just gonna go for the lot in one go. Mmm. wow. What a crazy combination of textures and flavors. <laughs> it's actually just come to me. I don't know why this is the most Googled recipe. It might not necessarily be a good thing. It could be the most Googled recipe because it's controversial or there's some sort of like weird crazy accident that happened or something. I think it's because it was the most popular. The sauce is gorgeous. It's mild, obviously creamy, but there is a real depth to it. I think it's the effort that we put into the paneer. Mmm. There's a mild crunch on it from the slurry. Then you've got that extra paneer, nutty, fruity, minty. The mint is quite dominant kick in there, riding through it. It's actually really, really nice. I, I didn't know what to expect. It's taken a blooming long time, but now I'm here. I think my favorite thing out of it, if I had to isolate it, I think it's this stuffing that we made. I think that, oh no, actually. <laughs> I forgot that's not couscous. I do think that the whole thing just needs like a little squeeze of lime or lemon, just a little bit of citrus to give it a kick. Mmm, but it so works. I blooming love that. I will tell you to Google it, but everyone else is. 